Hey everyone, welcome to Hunters Connect. Today, we're gonna to take a look at grinding deer burgers. To get started making burgers, first you wanna decide what cuts you wanna turn into steaks and roasts and what you wanna turn into burger. Many times, the less tender cuts end up in the grind pile. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all your attachments and accessories are as cold as possible. It's best to keep them in the refrigerator or in the freezer until you're ready to grind. That way, the meat moves through all those pieces cleanly and easily and doesn't get hung up and get sticky in that auger or in that grinder. We just finished thawing some of these cuts of deer meat and they're not completely thawed out yet. The insides are still a little bit frozen, which will help in that process to keep them from sticking to the auger and help them move through the machine much quicker and cleaner. It's important to remember that you get the meat into the grinder before you turn it on. You don't wanna run that auger without any meat in there or else it can cause damage to your equipment. Without further ado, let's get started. When you're getting started, it's helpful to have a little plunger like this to help keep moving that meat down the tube and through into that auger. And then throughout the process, just keep an eye on things and keep feeding meat through there and keep an eye on it just to keep pushing that down and make sure that meat's continuing to feed through. We're starting out with a coarse plate, which is in the grinder right now. This is the fine plate. And what we'll show you is the difference in the size between the openings. A lot of people like to do two grinds of their meat, an initial coarse grind to get it down smaller, and then a fine grind to get it into a super compactable burger-like consistency. Today, we're just gonna do a coarse grind. That's how I like to grind my burger. Uh, but a lot of that's personal preference. It's something that you can play with and decide for yourself you know, what you like to cook with and what you enjoy eating best. A lot of folks will add beef tallow or pork fat to help the burger stick together better. Today, we're just gonna do a straight deer meat grind. You can check out our How to Make Elk Burger videos right here and see the external fats that we used the last time we made elk burgers. Now that we got that covered, let's get to grinding. It's important to remember, never stick your fingers down in the opening of this tray up here. That's what this is for. You can guide meat over it and get it close, kind of get it going into that hole, but never ever stick your fingers down in the opening. It's a quick way to lose a finger. Now that we're done grinding all the burger, it's time to package it. Today, we're gonna vacuum seal this meat. Now there's many ways to package and store the meat. You can use burger bags, vacuum seal, or saran wrap, and then butcher paper. Uh, but today we'll show you how to vacuum seal that burger. Now there's different ways to vacuum seal. You can get pre-cut bags that you can use just to get started, or you can get a roll of bags. And what you'll do is you'll cut those bags to size, seal one end, put the meat in it, seal the other end, and freeze it. I prefer to get a roll of bags and cut them to my own size, just so that I have some flexibility and don't waste any of that material. Now that we've got our bag sealed, we're gonna use just your regular kind of kitchen spoon to take the meat and put it in the bag. I like to use a spoon just because it keeps my hands clean and it allows me to kind of have an idea of how much meat is going into the bag. Burger bags typically have a line that says, you know, stop filling here, and that can kind of get you in the ballpark of what a pound will be. But using a spoon allows me to know that it's about a quarter pound of meat. And so that's roughly four patties. And when I go to cook, I know how much meat I'm taking out of the freezer. All right, so that's four scoops. Now, I'm just gonna let that settle in the bottom kind of flatten it out a little bit and try to get as much air out of there as I can. Make sure that the edge is clear so it gets a good seal. You can just see how it's packed down the bottom. It's pretty flat and that should, in the vacuum sealer, seal up super nice. 
So just like we did on the other side when we sealed the bag, we're gonna put it in that groove, close the lid, lock it up, and then this time, instead of hitting the seal button, we're going to hit the vac seal button, which is gonna vacuum this and then seal that bag. Sometimes while you're sealing, it helps to just put a little bit of pressure on that meat. As it's vacuum sealing, it'll start to fill any gaps that are in that bag, and it'll just help get you a better seal on that meat. Once it's done sealing, you'll hear the pressure release, and there you have it. Your burger's ready to go. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching Hunters Connect.